Hey guys, it's Andrew Cartwright here. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. It is the first of the year. Happy New Year's. Happy 2022. We can forget about 2021. Let's just, just leave it there. Just, just leave it there. Finished out the year and, uh, you know, still had enough energy today to run six miles, jump in 43 degree water for 10 minutes and bring you some incredible news. Another surprise that's on its way. Just what we like to hear, right? More stuff, more goodies. There's always sourced from articles in every one of these. Every one of these different videos have different information that are sourced and articles that are up to date. 50 to 200 articles a day I go through so that I could bring you this stuff so that you don't have to read through that mess. This surprise stimulus check pertains to unemployment recipients. Yes, you'll see why in a few minutes. These folks, which can, could be one, you could be one of them, are getting almost $600, and I'll tell you why in this video. So you gotta, the best stuff also we cover at the end. So if you get a, if you jump off before the end of the video, you don't see the best stuff. So make sure you stick around. Find out all about the new check coming, why one unemployment key measure hasn't been this low in 52 years. It's amazing. I don't know if we should circle the wagons or get all excited or is this just fake news again? And why you shouldn't blame yourself for not being able to land a decent job right now. We're going to cover some of that. A lot of you have been trying. I know because I see it in the comments. Hey everybody, it's Andrew Cartwright here and I hope you're having a satisfying super suspense like Saturday. The first of the year, 1-1-2022. Here's your... Stimulus, jobs, unemployment, financial news, U.S. news for Saturday, January 1st, 2022. My goal in this video is to give you the best information to access both government and private money. You're like, I know, Andrew. Well, if you're new to the channel, welcome, because I'm trying to get you all the money that you deserve. Also, if you need a, something for your business, uh, a loan up to $5 million, I have a lending platform. It's been around since 2009. I help tons of businesses in as little as 15 minutes. You can get uh, some answers back, 12 different programs. I have 75 banking partners that's part of this. So we give rates that are bank rates. I don't do those high interest, crazy um, loans that just crush people. I don't do those. But there are places you could do that. I'm not one of them. I do have flipping credit lines for people who are looking to flip homes. You might want to do that. If you're looking to do that, we got some incredible lines there to cover. Just email me uh, in the description below. I'll be happy to get you uh, uh, talk about doing the lending line. Also, I have a real estate program, uh, a course. It's a $10,000 course. It's only $99. When to buy, how to buy, market cycles. So I spent $45 million making tons of mistakes. And I don't want you to have to. So it's only 99 bucks. It's a $10,000 course, limited time offer. We've been, every time I get ready to raise the price, people are like, just, just wait, just a little bit longer. So it's only $99 for a limited time. Also, I have a business course getting ready to come one of a kind, no other like it, but coming out very soon. Hopefully you guys stick around for that. Also, get $2,000. When we hit 200,000 subscribers, we're gonna pick a comment in the comment section from a subscriber. So put it together, all you gotta do, subscribe, like the video to bless the algorithm in the YouTube algorithm. It helps so much when you press the like button. Throw a comment in the comment section and we are gonna pick a random comment and uh, launch out $2,000 when we hit 200,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for being part of the channel, part of the community, and please consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Um, we aim to break it down for you every single day. Also, I have a second channel where you can get other information. This channel is all about personal finance, real estate, stock market, credit, how to get money. The other channel is how to make money. Uh, my second channel, finance channel, I sit down with entrepreneurs, I break down how to get loans, all kinds of stuff. It's in the description, that second channel, where I sit down and break it down for you on the second channel. It's longer format. It's called the Andrew Cartwright Show, if you Google it, if you type it in YouTube. Also, um, grab your stocks down below and also your Bitcoin. Thanks to my supporters who support me through Patreon. 20 articles a week, copy my book, lots of other goodies. But first, hundreds of thousands of Minnesotians have received surprise checks issued by Minnesota Department of Revenue for Americans who have paid state 
taxes on unemployment benefits. The department has proceeded about 500, processed about 524,000 of these impacted returns now out of a total of 542,000. So they're getting through it with an average refund of about $581. These kinds of things are happening all over the country. Which state are you in right now? Please pop it in the comments. Love, love to know where you're at. Chances are a similar program exists in your neck of the woods, so make sure you check it out. These programs, they pop up, but they're duplicated across state lines. And remember, states have $351 billion in their bank account. Anyways, the IRS's processing of these issuing refunds to millions of Americans because up to $10,200 of benefits did not count on their income under the American Rescue Plan, so they need to get their money back because they paid too much in taxes. You might have paid too much in taxes. Taxpayers were not required to pay federal taxes on them, which the bill was signed into law in March, but many had already preemptively filed their taxes. This is because millions of Americans are responsible and want to pay their taxes as soon as possible. No, it's because they get a refund back because the government usually takes 30% of their check and they're like, I need my refund. Well, you should get more money than you got. Although some states add, added state tax benefits, like Minnesota issued these tax exemptions, just as a federal government did the same. So many states are following suit with this, which means, you know, states were charging on this as well, which is really dumb. This whole, whole, the whole thing is kind of dumb. I, could, I can go on for days about how dumb the system is and how it, it doesn't help people in so many ways when it's like supposed to. Um, how do you give people money that are unemployed and then tax them on the money you gave them? Doesn't that kind of make no sense? It's nonsense, right? Well, this comes as a surprise to many taxpayers who were unaware that the tax rule had changed. They didn't even, some people didn't even know they had to pay taxes on unemployment, which again, is not common sense. There's no sense in paying taxes on unemployment. For all Minnesotians who are eligible, they will get a refund automatically as there's no need to file an amendment to your tax return. Just relax, just uh, you know, get a cold one or whatever you wanna do and you're covered, you're good. However, the Department of Revenue must have your information on file in order to receive the payment as a direct deposit. So if you want your money directly deposited, I saw a comment earlier today. It was like, hey, just, you know, tell me when it's going to hit my bank account. Well, this one, it, it should hit your bank account if you have all your information in. Otherwise, you're going to get a paper check in the mail. The Department of Revenue Commissioner Robert Doherty said, quote, we know these refunds are important to those taxpayers who have exercised hardship over the last year and a half. So, I mean, we're going on almost two years now of this just crazy thing, right? In March, really, look, come on. Um, we made the decision to adjust nearly all of these returns on our end so that the impact to taxpayers would not need to take the time and resources to file an amendment, which would further delay the refund they're due, end quote. That's what he said. That's what he had to say. So hopefully he's a, you know, um, part of his word is his bond, right? And all that good stuff. Meanwhile, as we know, the unemployment numbers haven't looked like this in 52 years. 52 years, we've never seen this before. We've seen 20% or 18% interest rates, but we've never seen unemployment numbers down here. Americans' latest report on unemployment benefits is proof that the U.S. job recovery is still in full swing. At least that's what our politicians, the newspapers, our news reporters, that's what everybody wants you to believe. The average number of weekly jobless benefit claims over the past four weeks fell to 199,250. That's the lowest four-week moving average since October of 1969. I wasn't around then, but I, I was definitely in my father's thoughts or mom's uh, at the time. The Labor Department reported Thursday. I, I came shortly after that. Last week's alone <laughs> claim stood at 198,000, adjusting the seasonal swings. So we've got a little bit of small swings, but still unbelievable. That's, that was slightly less than the economist had predicted, but above the pandemic error low. So we got low, 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 and then 
came up a little bit, but we're still crazy low. The number of continuing claims, counting workers who have applied for benefits for at least two consecutive weeks, stood at about 1.7 million in the week ending December 18th, the lowest level since March of 2021, when this all got started, when this beautiful merry-go-round we've been on started. All these data points are undeniably signs of strength in the labor market. If not, I mean, should be positive. How positive? I'm not really sure. Even though the recent claims plunge might overstate the actual improvements in the job market. I say that I got to swallow, got to think about that one for a moment because we know that these numbers are not always accurate. The winter holidays added some volatility to the numbers, though, according to the PNC chief economist Gus Fletcher. Even accounting for the volatility, the bottom line is Americans have mostly, or well, he says, American is back to work, Fauci said, or uh, Thatcher said, not Fauci. Quote, demand for labor is very strong and workers are short supply, so businesses are not laying off employees. Those workers who do find themselves unemployed can quickly find a new job, end quote. Even so, the pandemic isn't over, so we're always some dark clouds on the horizon. We see them. Um, at this moment, there's a highlighted on the infectious Omicron variant, which I went to go see Bruno Mars in concert. They locked up our phones, so you're not going to see any of that on my Instagram. If you go to my Instagram stories, you'll see me running six miles, going in the pool in the 43-degree weather. Anyway, you can check all my stuff out. I'm a social person. So, so far, the spike in Omicron cases hasn't slowed up the job data. But that doesn't mean it won't. It could. It's, quote, substantially downside near-term risk of the um, outlook for job growth, end quote, Voucher said. So we're still, you know, the jury's out, I guess. Quote, if consumers change their behaviors and pull back on their spending, particularly on services, job growth could slow dramatically in early 2022, end quote. Do you guys think this is all kind of insane? Really? I mean, people spending money in light of all the virus and everything that's going on? I don't know. Finally, a lot of these conversations around current labor challenges has pointed to short-term factors like school closures and federal aid programs. Yet, school reopenings and, as I just discussed, the reduction in unemployment insurance benefits failed to produce the hope-for spike in worker availability. Just didn't happen. Also, we've got schools now that are going totally online because of the Omicron just in yesterday, or actually today. Some businesses, though, have been forced to cut services or hours of operations and even turn away customers to cope with staffing shortages. So we've got shortages, we've got Omnicrom, we got people are just like, this, this business thing is like a moving target. I just went to a coffee shop, it was closed. Filing the, filling these gaps is important part of fueling the economy, keeping people together and working and, and making stuff work. Some workers are simply bit, biding their time, sitting out for months, accumulating savings while looking for a job that provides them with a better fit for their skills, their values, their interests, and personal needs, like not being around people you don't want to work around. At any rate, many people are still hesitating to return back to jobs that may expose them to other loved ones to the pandemic issues like the Omnicom looming, especially if you're in with a family member who has pre-existing conditions or maybe just, you know, not vaccinated or couldn't get vaccinated. I don't know. Not, not going to talk about that right now. Of which place repeatedly high stress situations for these people. So how do business owners hold on to their employees? I'll leave it up to you guys. Give me your, your input on that. I'd love to know. First of all, you could take a look at the workload and there could be a creative way about staffing. Break down employees' roles into tasks and then consider, well, which task can you digitize? Can you uh, do it with a contractor or what should be done by an employee? And maybe you shuffle that around a bit so it works out for everybody. This will often stride, uh, you know, strip away some of the tasks that people find, well, less satisfying and free up employees' time for what matters most, what they enjoy most. Um, you're not gonna enjoy everything. Come on, it's called work. But some things you could. You should rethink the skills that are required to complete a task while 
expanding the talent pool, get better people that love what they're doing. And lastly, you should treat your employees with, like individual shareholders, hopefully they actually feel that way. All this is information that came from an article in Fast Company. It's full of great advice for employees on how to retain their employees. Fast Company is something I subscribe to. It's not sponsored, I just, I just read them. I read a lot of stuff, I tell you. Uh, with that said, if, uh, if we could know why people aren't getting their jobs, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. You know, maybe they don't want them, but we've got to ask ourselves why they don't want them. Why don't they want them? Now that we know it's clear no federal benefits are, are coming in to save the day today, we don't know what Omnicrom will bring us in the future. I'll pass the question on to you. What are your thoughts? Tell me in the stories. I'm Andrew Cartwright. I love you guys. Take care. So yeah. does that give us like a cultural abandonment issue? Oh, for like if sure. Like if you had 9 million dads come in <laughs> and then yeah. you had 9 million dads leave. I'd have daddy wouldn't, issues. Wouldn't you have daddy issues? <laughs> yeah. I'm I not would. saying you do. I was buying a racetrack for $28 million in Wait, Utah. Wait, was it the Larry H. Miller? Yeah. That literally is five minutes from my house. I've done everything right and failed. Yeah. Me, yeah. I've yeah. done everything right and failed. Yeah. It's not your fault. It's just, it, it's you know, really it's a, so. I do need your autograph here. Will you sign so, one of these for me? I, we'll get, we'll get to that. <laughs> That's probably what got you back up on your feet. Yeah.